Hello students, let us discuss NEET 2013 physics paper codex. In this code, physics is starting with question 136. Here you can see it says uh, a uniform force of 3i plus j newton acts on a particle of mass 2 kg. Hence the particle is displaced from position 2i plus k meter to position 4i plus 3j minus k meter. The work done by the force on the particle is and the choices are 6 joule, 13 joule, 15 joule and 9 joule. In this particular question you see this mass 2 kg is immaterial. If you want to calculate work done, this can simply be written as force multiplied by the displacement vector and displacement vector will be simply final position minus initial position. Here the force is given it to be 3i plus j that is 3i plus j Newton and R2 minus R1 because R2 is final position so 4i minus 2i that is 2i 3j minus 0 that is 3j and minus k minus of plus k that is minus 2k cap. If you take the dot product of these two quantities that is 3 into 2 that is 6, 1 into 3 that is 3 and here there is no k component so that will be 0 and ultimately the answer will be 9 joule. So the correct option here will be the fourth one that is 9 joule. If you get into the next question that is question 137, it says that AB and C are three points in a uniform electric field. The electric potential is in this particular diagram you have to find out which point is at maximum potential because you see the options they are guiding you to the fact that what ultimately is to be done in this particular question. You can see here it is writing maximum at B, maximum at C, maximum at A, same at all the points. That means you have to think on the line that what is happening to the potential as you are moving down the electric field. Now to solve this particular question, I will suggest that you can use the expression E is equal to minus dV by dr. In case I say E is equal to minus dV by dr. This can be the formula which can be the guiding factor in the sense that it says the negative sign it says that the potential goes down as you are moving down the electric field. That means if you are moving from left to right the potential starts going down. So the potential will be maximum at B next lesser than that that will be at C lesser than that that will be at A. So potential is maximum at B this is the kind of option you must look for and for that matter the correct option will be the first one. Now let us get into the next question. Now the next question 138 it says that a coil of self inductance L is connected in series with a bulb B, bulb B here will be treated as resistance and an AC source. Brightness of the bulb decreases, here brightness is related to the current which is passing into the circuit brightness of the bulb decreases when number of turns in the coil is reduced and options like this has been given. Now see in this particular question you have to see that the current that is essentially governed by this particular expression. This is the voltage, AC voltage you can say, this is the resistance of the bulb, frequency applied and this is inductance of the coil. Now see if you want the brightness of the bulb to decrease that means the current has to decrease understand. So for that matter EMF should decrease or anything in the denominator must increase. If you look at option number 1 it says that number of turns in the coil is reduced. If the number of the turns in the coil is reduced then inductance goes down. So that is not the correct option you have to increase the denominator you see. Next says a capacitance of the reactance Xc is equal to Xl. What is the meaning of this Xc is equal to Xl? It means it is a kind of resonance condition in which 
it is only the pure resistance that will be remaining to picture. For that matter, again you can see the denominator is decreasing, which is not required. That you have to increase the denominator. Third says an iron rod is inserted in the coil. This is a good option because once you are inserting iron rod, it will be increasing the value of inductance because that is increasing the permeability. And fourth says the frequency of the AC source is decreased. If you will decrease the frequency of AC source, again our purpose will be will not be served. So correct option will be the third one here in this particular question. Now in the next question that is 139, it says that the upper half of an inclined plane of inclination theta is perfectly smooth while lower half is rough. So in this particular situation, you can see you have an inclined plane whose lower half is rough. This is the portion which is rough. You see that. Now it is saying that a block starting from rest at the top of the plane will again come to rest at the bottom. You can approach to this particular question with the help of energy balance. In the sense, whatever mass is kept here, you see by the time it is reaching the bottom, it is again coming to rest. So whatever is the work done due to gravity on this, that is completely lost against this friction. So you can say mg sin theta that is the force acting in this particular direction multiplied by L. Let us suppose this is the length mg sin theta into length. That work done is completely lost against mu mg cos theta into L by 2. You have to just balance this and that will give you the answer second one mu is equal to 2 tan theta. Now let us move on to question number 140. Now in the next question that is 140, it is a information based question. The wettability of a surface by a liquid depends primarily on surface tension, density, angle of contact between the surface and the liquid and fourth option is viscosity. The most appropriate option for this thing will be the third one. You see when the angle of contact is more than 90 degree, it is not wetting the surface as you have seen the case of mercury. In case of water if it is less than 90, so it is wetting the surface. Rest of things are maybe dependent but that too indirect sense. Of course, some way surface tension is deciding the angle of contact and so on. But the most obvious answer for this thing will be the angle of contact. Now in the next question that is question 141, again you can see this is information based question and directly lifted from your NCRT book based on microwave oven. In the chapter of uh, electromagnetic waves, they have mentioned an article based on electromagnetic waves. Clearly you will find that they have mentioned this fact that this water molecules they have their natural frequency of the order of gigahertz and that is why whenever we are designing microwave ovens approximately you can see at 2450 megahertz they are operating. Now what is the significance of these two coincidence is the fourth option in this particular case that you can have. The question reads the condition under which a microwave oven heats up a food item containing water molecules most efficiently is. If you look at the fourth option, it is saying the frequency of the microwaves must match. This is very important. The frequency of water dipole moments and you see the frequency at which the microwave oven is working. Both of them are having a reasonably very close frequency and that is the fourth option that is mentioned here. Now let us get into next question that is question 142.